there. Okay, here we go. Uh, prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O King of Israel, Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Okay, party time. Uh, first of all, from last week, I forgot something. Remember, we were talking about the... Um, the, the woman in Sidon who, in a bad translation, Jesus refers to her as a dog, but we know that he refers to her actually as a puppy. And one of the things I, I forgot to mention is that, of course, the, the apostles expected Jesus to refer to her as a dog, and he did not. And that by using the word puppy, in the sense of, of the chosen people being the chosen people and every, all the Gentiles being dogs, is that when Jesus refers to her as a puppy, he's saying... You're kind of part of the family. People like her are not out like a dog. They're kind of halfway in the club like a puppy would be. Something less than the children, but nevertheless a part of our extended family. Um, so I just want to get that out of my system. Because <laughs> otherwise, you might not hear it again, especially if you have a bad translation. Okay, look, I need two women volunteers. I can pick two. <laughs> Oh, that's the spirit, darling. Get up here, and I just need one more woman volunteer. Come on. The fear. The fear. Okay, here. Wait, 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 wait. Here, this is for you. Hold that. Okay, come on. Need another woman. Come over come this on. way a little bit. Go here you go. Back, back, back up over here. Stand right there. Okay, need another woman. There you go, darling. I love that. Come over here on this side. Hooray. Y'all going to be famous on YouTube. Come on. Just hold that right there. Okay, now, you know who this is? Eve. Yeah. You know who this that's is? Mary. Yeah, that's Mary. Uh -huh. Who's that? That's the baby Jesus. That is baby Jesus. Get fired up. Okay, <laughs> now, here's what I want y'all to do. Now tell us, Eve, how do you feel being Eve? Bad. Yeah, why do you feel bad, Eve? Because I can't. You can do the right thing. That's right, because with you <laughs> and your good for nothing husband, we are all miserable. Now, right. now, Mary darling, how do you feel? Wonderful. Oh, it's so yeah. great that you feel wonderful. Why do you feel wonderful, Mary? Because I'm good for nothing. Yeah, you are. Now y'all do me a favor. Y'all y'all turn and face each other. <laughs> right now, now Mary, you take Eve's poor little hand and you and you put that on your baby. Now, now Eve, how do you feel? Wonderful. Yeah, you feel so much better. Why do you feel so much better, Eve? Because I'm touching Jesus. Yeah, you are. And we know now that, that, that this woman who made a, made a mistake that any of us would make and, and, has, and has lived with that, with that guilt and unhappiness for all this time, now she can feel good because you're, you're the woman that's going to fix everything. Yeah, so through, <laughs> through this woman, evil kind of entered the world, but through this woman... That's all going to get taken back. Now, y'all turn and face the audience. Now, these two women, I want you to think of them. This is yet another way to think about how the Bible works. Let Eve represent the Old Testament, and Mary represents the New Testament. And you can always understand, that's an easy way to understand salvation history in terms of these two women, and actually between the two women, all the miraculous mothers that there were between the two of you. Okay, But we don't have time for that. Now, let me have my props back. Y'all don't go away yet. <laughs> now, here's another one for you. Since they can be thought of as the two halves of the Bible, just like this Bible, and the thing I like about it is that if you have the Bible, see, it's like there's an Old Testament, there's a New Testament, and they kind of flop open mm -hmm. and shut. All right. Now, this is for you. I don't know anything about oh, these yeah. things. As for you. <laughs> now, think of these two women as they are representing the two hinges of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, y'all show me. Of what? Y'all have to make this hinge be useful. Go ahead. 
Okay, all right, that's it. Don't, don't get too confused. All right now, is the hinge worth anything yet? No. no. What does the hinge need to be to be Nail valuable? Or whatever it needs that the thing. pin. Okay. Yeah, we drop the pin in it. Yes, darling, the pin is Jesus. Now the two of y'all can hold on to your hinges and the whole thing holds together. So again, the Old Testament and the New Testament lose their meaning without the pin to hold them together. And in fact, the pin itself doesn't have any meaning without the Old Testament and the New Testament to give Jesus has the purpose too, because if you had never eaten that damn apple, That's we, right. wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this problem, right? Okay, terrific. So this is another way. Thank you all. Y'all did a great job. Let's hear it for the whole lady. Hooray! All right. So now, with that as an, in, with that as an introduction, I have a handy-dandy handout. Let's see. It's right here. Because, let me see how many people I have over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think maybe y'all are about 11 people. Here, here's one for you. And then y'all can just sort the rest of these out on your own time. And I have some more for y'all over there. Um, see, in Sunday school, we don't have a textbook. So everything we do is based on handouts if we have to have them. Here you go, here you go. Okay. Now that that first picture. Oh, and I have to show this. I have to show this to the camera. Okay. Now, everybody in YouTube land, mm -hmm. I'm going to put these two images up where you can you can find the link to them at the YouTube um, at the YouTube post when it goes up. Um, now, the one that we've seen over here on the left. Y'all see that the whole thing was stolen from this piece of art, which was done by this charming um, monastic nun. I think she lives in Alabama, maybe five or six years ago. I just bumped into this on the internet, and I loved it so much. It's just perfect, a perfect visual lesson for kids, a perfect catechetical lesson. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, there's one thing that we, that we had to leave out, is that there's the snake tangling up poor Eve, but yet Mary steps on the, the serpent's head. So that's nice. Visual catechesis, you can't beat it. Now I have to take this up because we have to talk about this other piece, this other piece of art which is up here. And I'm probably going to draw to make it bigger. Okay, this is a picture of an Annunciation. It comes from the Eisenheim altarpiece. This thing is spectacular. Um, anyway, it's, um, it's in Eisenheim. I think that's in France, probably near the Rhine River, given it's got a German name. Anyway, this thing in real life is, is about 9 feet tall and 16 feet wide, and it's all these panels. It's so spectacular. I mean, see, it opens up like this. Oh, my goodness. And then it opens up again, and it opens up down here. I mean, it's just terrific. So that with this altarpiece, a wealthy person could travel around and take the altarpiece with them, and, and the altarpiece could be flipped open at, in, at different liturgical seasons, none of the covered different different subject material. And, and this one, um, I've never seen it. It's kind of funny. My, my sister went to, um, went to Eisenheim and bought, got this for me. Hey, Jill, how you doing? Oh, you missed all the fun. Oh, well, yeah, you guys will go home. Um, you see right here, over here, this is the, I think it's called the, the, second, the second frame of the left-hand side of the Eisenheim altarpiece. My wife knows all about that. She's an art historian. So I remember I was saying, oh, I love this picture where Mary's like thus and so, and she's kind of kind of recoiling a little bit at the shock of the angel appearing to her, and she says, oh yeah, that's thus and so, and she knew where it was. Anyway, so this is just terrific, and by the way, not to digress more than necessary, this, this risen Christ over here is regarded as one of the most visionary understandings of what Jesus in his glorified state would have looked like. Um, this, this painting, I think, was done around 1512, so like the guy is such a player to come up with something like that, isn't he? Anyway, so that's a little introduction just to cover this catechetically rich picture, which we're about to beat to death. So, we start off, let's see what we have to look at uh, at first, is we have the angel over here. Okay, here's the angel, and um, he's in a good mood, and he's got a, even if, even if I doesn't show him the wing, I'm going to show you a wing. Okay, he's come down, he's given the word to, to Mary, and... Well, the first thing is, how can you tell that this person is an angel? He's got wings, yes. And, and, what is, and what is this thing that he's got in his hand? Yeah, what does that mean? 
king and rule? Yeah, he's is, he's it, somebody important. Yeah, yeah. All right, Wendy, but but is let me ask this: Is he the king? No. no. Okay, but what's he carrying? King staff. The king's staff. And so, what does that mean? Representative. He you? comes with the king's authority. Yeah. Now, you may remember this is a this is of course is an angel, which as we know it just means messenger. And we know that this is a heavenly messenger because it has wings. And we know that this messenger has uh, the authority of a king because he carries a staff. Now, I love this. Can anybody think of another messenger that has wings and carries a staff? Mythological messenger. No. Mercury. Mercury. Yeah. Mercury has wings, and Mercury always carries the staff of, of, of his authority, because remember, Mercury has no authority of his own. He's just a messenger. And I'm guessing that when this was painted that he was riffing a little bit on, on Mercury, but I don't know that this is necessarily so. So he's bringing the message. Now, over here, we have Mary, and she's so beautiful, and she's a little bit taken by surprise. Kissy lips and everything. Okay. She's a little bit taken by surprise. She's busy praying. Da, 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 da. Okay, there she is. Now, Mary is taken aback. And the way she's sitting here is, number one, she there's this, there's this chest here, and there's a book on it. Now, you can't read this, but the book is open to a particular passage of Isaiah. If, you're, if you actually go, go and and look at this book, it, it's actually written in Latin, which is interesting because Latin didn't exist in Mary's day, but of course she's reading from a Latin Bible. Anyway, <laughs> but the passage, anybody want to guess? Kids can't do this. Y'all might be able to. Anybody want to guess what passage of Isaiah at this moment Mary is reading? Mm. It's okay, you don't have to guess. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. So, again, the, this, the, the painter is not missing any trick. So she's sitting here. She's reading Isaiah. At the moment she's reading Isaiah, the messenger comes down and announces to her from Luke that, in fact, she is about to have a baby. Now, this overall building looks like what kind of architecture? A dance hall. Um, a swimming pool? No. Church. Church. Geniuses. Yes. It looks like a church. And so we have this, this architecture, okay, that's implying actually a Gothic church. All right. And we see that, what's this red thing? Curtain. Yeah, there's a curtain. Okay, there's a curtain. And what's further back after that front curtain? Another curtain. Yes. So we have a perspective. All right, so we have two curtains. And are the curtains blocking your view of, of the rest of the church? No. No, they are pulled back, revealing the rest of the church. Indeed they are. Now, if you look at the back of this church or this building, by the way, at this moment in Mary's life, is there such a thing as a church? No. No, no. so probably in Mary's, in, in, in Mary time, what would this building be? Synagogue. A synagogue, exactly right. And let's even go a little bit further, not just a synagogue, which is a rather run-of-the-mill building, but temple. the temple, exactly. And at the very, very back of the temple, what would you expect to see? The temple. Yes, you would expect to see the... The Ark of the Covenant, yes. The tabernacle's good. You'd expect to see the Ark of the Covenant back here, but yet, if you look back here, it's empty. So, we have, at this moment in time in the Ark, this is, this is showing us the temple, and, and the two curtains are pulled back. The inner curtain is pulled back, and the outer curtain is pulled back, so that everything can now be seen. What which one was once hidden is now going to be visible. And you look back there, and there's no, there's no cherubim, there's no poles, there's no ark. No, the ark is not there. Ooh, it's elsewhere. Where is the ark? Yeah, there's the ark right there. It doesn't have its poles, but there's the ark. Mm -hmm. Now, and remember, God's stuff is in the ark. We just put God's stuff right here so nobody is confused. God's stuff. All right, God's stuff is in the box. Now, if you look at the way... The, the painting is organized. Mary is pretty much lying right within the plane of that outer veil, almost like she'd probably stand up and bonk her head on the, on the pole. And what's happening, and this is my opinion because I've never been able to find any support for this in any 
analyses of this painting. I think what's happening is, first of all, which ark is this? The ark of the Old Covenant. Old Covenant. Now, and this one is the new. ark of the New Covenant. Right. Now, at this point in time in the painting, this ark has moved. Where has it moved from? The tent. Yeah, and which way is it going? Is it moving in or out? Out. It's moving out. out. And so by extension, which way is Mary moving? In. in. Mary is moving in. Yeah. And what's going to happen is that this is like this, this moment when, when, the, when the two hinges all of a sudden get their, get their punch. Is that, look, the old covenant is, is, is kind of becoming irrelevant, just as, in fact, Jeremiah had prophesied. And the new covenant is taking its place. Now, let's look up here. I don't know if y'all can see what this is up here. Can y'all identify what that is? Oh, is it the Holy Spirit? Yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and the Holy, so the Holy Spirit's up here. And um, can you see, I remember this is a literal, this is a, a visual graphic recapitulation of what, of what, the, what the angel says. And she says, how am I going to have this baby? And he says, the, 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 the Holy Spirit will come over you. Okay, that's the first part. The Holy Spirit will come over you. And remember, it's the Holy Spirit, as we see, the Holy Spirit has wings. So you know that the Holy Spirit is performing what function? Because with, with its wings. Overshadowing. Overshadowing, yes. Yeah, so the Holy Spirit is overshadowing Mary simply because the, the Holy Spirit is representing the dove and the Psalms are full of, of mother doves overshadowing and protecting. Now, can you see what's surrounding the Holy Spirit? Halo. No, close. What is that thing? Cloud? Glory cloud. Yes, the glory cloud. That is the glory cloud. All right, in which, in which the Holy Spirit is. And that is, that's the second part of Luke's quote. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the, the, the image is covering both bits of Luke. The, the Holy Spirit overshadows you, and the power of the Most High overshadows you. Now, if we look at the picture again, um, Mary and the, and the bird and the Shekinah cloud don't quite overlap. What is the cloud and the dove? What are they overshadowing? They are overshadowing Mary's little tummy that's got Jesus in it. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Now, up here, there's this guy who kind of looks dead. Anybody want to guess who he is? No, good guess. Isaiah. In other words, what it's as though it's as though, and he has got his 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 Torah is open in Hebrew to the same page of Mary's Latin Torah, Old Testament, and they're both saying their own language. In each language, is that behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. So what's happening is that it's as though God has let Isaiah out of Sheol uh, just long enough to come and see his prophecy come true. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is just a spectacular teaching tool. And the reason I love it is I loved it as, a, as an adult as just a way to say a whole lot of things about salvation and the Bible and the Testament and the Old Covenant and New Covenant and churches and temples and, and, and Mary conceiving Jesus and just the whole, the whole thing is, is told in just a single gesture it just, I've just never seen any art like this in my life. I mean, there, there's a lot of religious art that has a lot of symbolism. Some of it tends to be a little bit heavy-handed or hard to cipher. It's like things that don't hold together. But every, all the symbols in this picture all coalesce in a way that generally most religious art doesn't. And I just love it to death. Anyway, this is kind of a graphic, a graphic night. So that, that was the first thing. Um, for this evening is that beautiful, beautiful picture. And then I think this one is so terrific because it, it was only made a few years ago and it's much, much simpler. But, but I find that this, no less than this, has, has an incredible emotional and catechetical and, and religious impact, partly because of its, of its kind of simplicity. It's very sweet and dear. And, and, and there's a whole lot comes from that too. Anyway, the, two, the, the kids go through this exact same thing that y'all went through tonight with the hinges and everything. And, um, and then they, 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 they go nuts over, over figuring all this 